Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma's uh, Health Sciences Center, and our program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our case today comes from the realm of GI path. It's a 50-year-old woman who's experiencing some dyspepsia, pain, and is also found to have anemia, raising concern for some sort of problem going on in her GI tract. Uh, so, uh, with so a little bit of initial uh, workup, she comes to endoscopy uh, and is found to have some uh, erosions uh, involving much of the stomach. Uh, this is a representative sample from uh, one of those areas. And as you can see at low magnification, we have some distortion of the architecture. We have some calcifications or something here in the sort of deep uh, lamina propria. Uh, and we have variable uh, degrees of uh, chronic inflammation associated with this uh, in these fragments. So we'll look at this fragment up here first. We see there's some lymphocytes. We have some parietal epithelium. Uh, here we see a little bit of uh, intestinal type metaplasia, uh, perhaps indicative of uh, uh, response to either uh, atrophic gastritis or possibly helicobacter. And then we see these nested nodular areas here, uh, which uh, have nice characteristic uh, multinucleate giant cells, clustered histiocytes, and these wonderful little calcifications that are fragmenting um, and in their smaller forms uh, look like uh, nice uh, Schaumann bodies. And we can see several of them all through the uh, lamina propria here, uh, along with this uh, chronic inflammation. Now we would of course uh, go to higher magnification on the surface here to see uh, if we have evidence of uh, helicobacter, uh, because the, certainly the pattern of inflammation and uh, intestinal metaplasia could be associated with that. Um, but we did not find that uh, on uh, uh, either immunostains or the routine H&E. We'll look a little further at the other fragments here, and uh, we can see that there's some dropout, there's some mixed inflammation in here. Uh, here's a few eosinophils associated with this inflammatory infiltrate uh, scattered in through here as well. And then, uh, Again, more calcifications in multinucleate giant cells uh, and lymphoid clusters uh, without any uh, destructive uh, expression. So here again, nice uh, granulomas with uh, Schaumann body calcifications. Uh, biopsy from another area of the stomach uh, shows uh, some similar findings. Uh, here we are uh, more typically in the uh, uh, body or fundus, as we see the parietal epithelium here. Not as much inflammation, but again, we can see some suggestion of a little bit of a granuloma here that's had the center drop out because it's got a Schaumann body type calcification. Here we see more of these over here, uh, down in the deep lamina propria. Um, and again, maybe nah, not quite the intestinal metaplasia, but maybe sort of leaning in that direction. Uh, as we might uh, imagine here, multinucleate giant cells there. So several uh, areas uh, in the stomach involved by uh, granulomatous inflammation, some intestinal metaplasia, and other mixed chronic inflammation. Well, what should we be thinking about in this situation? Well, with gastric granulomas, uh, there are a number of things that are both common and less common uh, that we might encounter. Uh, in the Orient, or people who uh, consume raw fish, anisokiasis uh, would be a consideration, although this usually is localized and not a generalized uh, uh, granulomatous uh, gastritis. Uh, common variable in immunodeficiency, Crohn's disease, uh, certainly foreign bodies can account for uh, granulomatous inflammation. Histoplasmosis uh, usually would not have Schaumann bodies, but uh, could uh, have multiple and disseminated granulomas. There are idiopathic forms and then iatrogenic uh, related to barium or other things. And then the, uh, the typical things we might think of, sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, maybe vasculitis or neoplasia, perhaps if the granulomas contain mucin. So in our particular case, things we might consider that uh, would be generalized would be common variable immunodeficiency, Crohn's disease, sarcoid, tuberculosis, um, not very likely vasculitis. We didn't see any changes suspe suspected for that. Uh, 
So further workup of this patient uh, disclosed uh, that uh, there were, uh, this is a representative uh, figure of the uh, gastric ulcerations. Uh, and if we were to look at the GE junction uh, seen here, we might see a little bit of a nodule uh, and it had a little bit of suggestion of uh, ulceration. Uh, and here you can see the characteristic types of uh, type granulomas that might be seen uh, in, especially in early cases with uh, sarcoidosis. Our patient does have sarcoidosis and on further evaluation was found to have elevated calcium and uh, elevated angiotensin converting enzyme levels. Uh, this uh, disorder is more common in adults <clears throat> that are in their sort of uh, midlife, uh, particularly uh, 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 those of uh, black uh, race. Um, it may involve multiple levels of the GI tract ranging from the esophagus down into the duodenum, ileum, and colon, uh, but the stomach is the most commonly involved site. Uh, it can be either diffuse or nodular and, and, and mass forming. Ulcers are very common in the uh, presentation morphologically. And uh, typical presenting symptoms when it presents primarily in, and initially in the GI tract are those of pain, anemia, and uh, maybe weight loss. Uh, if we're looking at it de novo, then oftentimes people want to consider, or, or from a clinical standpoint, uh, people will be wanting to consider Whipple's disease, Crohn's disease, SPRU, and so forth. Uh, and so we'll de do uh, biopsies of the uh, both uh, upper tract, uh, duodenum, and uh, potentially colon as well to consider those entities. From a uh, spread of disease standpoint, certainly the most uh, common GI site that's involved by uh, Crohn's disease is the liver. Uh, whereas we see here, uh, we can get uh, multiple uh, granulomata, uh, oftentimes fairly tight, uh, that displace and distort uh, the hepatic parenchyma, giving an impression of uh, fibrosis. Uh, but actually, these are uh, nice uh, granulomata. Uh, and here we see small ones. Uh, now, uh, one or two granulomas in the liver do not, of course, mean uh, sarcoidosis. Those are very frequent with many other entities. But when you see uh, extensive granulomatous uh, gastritis, lots of granulomas, then certainly thinking about sarcoidosis would be a very excellent idea. Um, here, just to illustrate the pathologic features of sarcoidosis uh, from a rather large recent review reported in uh, uh, the Journal of the American College of Gastroenterology, uh, you can see that uh, uh, upper GI tract, stomach, esophagus, duodenum, uh, is not infrequently uh, the point of initial manifestation in terms of presentation of sarcoidosis. Uh, among these, the percentage-wise, uh, stomach is the most present, uh, prevalent. Uh, but lower tract disease also can be a site of involvement. Um, and uh, again, we see that most commonly this is diffuse uh, with less frequently being sort of polypoid or extramural involvement. Uh, additionally, uh, if we want to think about how we differentiate this from other entities in consideration, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, um, of course, sarcoidosis most frequently involves the lungs, uh, but when it involves the uh, 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 GI tract, um, it can be uh, somewhat uh, confused with these other organs, which do not usually involve the lungs. Uh, so if we either don't miss the, uh, the uh, systemic involvement uh, and we're thinking just the GI tract, then uh, we may uh, end up with having to work on this differential. So our, uh, just to sort of uh, conclude things, here's a nice uh, representative lung biopsy, again showing uh, areas of uh, granulomatous inflammation uh, non-caseating type. Uh, these do not have the nice Schaumann bodies that we saw in the uh, uh, GI tract, but you can see multiple clusters of histiocytes fairly tight without evidence of necrosis. So our final sign out diagnosis is granulomatous gastritis, most consistent with sarcoidosis. Of course, sarcoidosis requires the exclusion of the other entities uh, and rests upon a clinical correlation to make that final diagnosis. Well, thanks for joining us for this discussion of granulomatous disease in the stomach. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, share and subscribe so you'll uh, catch on to future releases. And we always welcome your comments, uh, cases or uh, issues that you've encountered uh, and would like uh, to contribute uh, to our uh, viewers and uh, suggest to me. 
So until next time, we certainly appreciate you joining us and uh, we will look forward to uh, that next time when we can be together. Thanks a lot.